Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A local man appears in federal court for involvement in drugs. Also tonight, the debate on Article 12 is finally put to rest. And budget process begins up on the hill. In sports, close to 200 youngsters kick it in a one-day grassroots festival. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Meal replacement smoothie is a great way to keep your fitness goals on track during 2021 and they taste great. It's fast and easy. The May smoothie of the month is pineapple carrot cake. It includes banana, granola, raisins, cinnamon, carrots, and pineapple with 21 and a half grams of protein. It's good for your eyes and good for your waistline. Check out the Shake Cafe Gold's Gym, Garabin. There you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, May 19th, 2021. A local man who has trouble with the law for over 20 years was arrested by federal officers for meth. The United States District Court issued an arrest warrant for Dwight Lee Dillon Guerrero Odon, who is being charged with possession with intent to distribute more than 50 grams of methamphetamine. Odon appeared in the federal court this morning for an initial appearance, pleading not guilty to count one in the indictment. Court set the jury trial for July 27 of this year. According to KSPN archives, Aldon was wanted by police back in 2000 as he was a suspect accused of assault and robbery of a poker in Chinatown. Then again in 2016, Aldon was arrested through a joint task force effort. He was wanted for robbery and sexual assault. It's been more than a month now, and police continue the search of a wanted local male who is considered to be armed and dangerous. Don Sanchez Jr. is still on the run from local authorities. Sanchez is being charged of receiving stolen property, failure to complete firearms owner identification, removal of a firearm serial number, and possession and trafficking of methamphetamine. His bail has been set at $100,000. The Department of Public Safety has received several tips that Sanchez may be operating a Silver RAV4 or a Charcoal Mazda 6. DPS advises the public not to approach Sanchez, but call 911 immediately. If you wish to remain anonymous, you may call the Crime Stoppers hotline. Up on Capitol Hill, lawmakers begin the budget process. 
The governor's projected budget amount for fiscal year 2022 is around $144 million. But when we minus debt and DPL payments, it equals down to $96 million, which is pretty much the same as last year. The House Committee on Ways and Means has started the budget process and have finished the hearings on Rhoda and Tinian. According to Chairman Donald Maglonia, the mayors of the two senatorial districts are supportive with the governor's proposal. They do have additional requests, but with the budget package allocations from the American Rescue Plan Act, it will be able to supplement the shortfall. It is sufficient to cover any shortfall in terms of uh, the additional funds that they're getting through ARPA, but they do have additional requests, um, and these are requests that um, aren't typically submitted through maybe their budget requests, um, and these are requests for additional heavy equipment or, or infrastructure projects. And so the committee is looking at um, submitting its proposal as well on the ARPA um, and how we can support these municipalities. The Saipan Municipal Council kicked off the budget hearing series at the House Chamber on Tuesday, followed by the Saipan Mayor's Office. Almost every government division is set to meet with the committee this month and throughout June. Maglonia states the committee will be submitting their proposal on Volume 4, which is the ARPA funds, soon. We did receive a brief uh, uh, proposal from OMB on how those uh, the opera funds are going to be uh, distributed for the next two fiscal years, but uh, part of uh, um, the committee's uh, goal is to also uh, submit uh, our proposal on how the governor can can spend those funds. Uh, and again, these are based on our, our budget hearings with all these agencies, just to ensure that. Uh, we take care of the immediate needs as well as uh, think how can this benefit the cinema long term. Maglonia plans to pass a balanced budget by the first week of July. The people have spoken and Senator Jude Hofschneider says he has listened. Here is where he stands on amending Article 12. I think uh, it's understood that through the the series of hearings in the three islands um, we have heard the uh, concerns of the public um, and I appreciate that because that's the reason why I introduced that in that platform so that I can hear the sentiments of the of the, the general population and uh, I want to I want to say that I'm listening to to the people that's the reason why I asked the committee to uh, proceed with the next phase Legislative Initiative 22-01 is dismissed. Senate President and author of the initiative, Jude Hofschneider, delivered a privileged statement during the Senate session on Tuesday, stating he was simply offering an option and not an absolute mandate. I'm a firm believer of individuals, uh, individual ultimate definition of individual uh, rights, right, as a private land. And to me, if you if it's your private land, you know. Uh, uh, recognizing the the our forefathers' intent to to put that uh, restriction for the, at least for the first 25 years, uh, we can revisit it. So that was the intent. According to Hofschneider, amending Article 12 could have led to more business opportunities in the CNMI. When you open up uh, uh, land tenureship, uh, especially on private land, um, it tends to attract uh, more uh, uh, interest in terms of uh, business opportunity. Yeah? And you know, as is the common knowledge that uh, a vibrant business uh, business uh, um, uh, climate is a positive uh, revenue stream for public programs. So okay. that's one of the primary reason. And I didn't, you know, I never knew, I never even imagined that would ever imagine in my lifetime that our main source of economic uh, revenue, tourism, would ever shut down, and it did happen. So, right. so you know, as a representative for the CNMI, I, it is my responsibility to think uh, other means to how to to strike interest, no, to be self-sustaining here economically. A legislative initiative is a proposal to amend the constitution. It must be passed by three fourths of members of the legislature before being put on the ballot, and voters have the final say on it.
This particular legislative initiative had proposed to amend Article 12 of the CNMI Constitution and remove the land alienation restriction in the CNMI. The author stated it will allow landowners of Northern Marianas descent to fully exercise their real property rights and would have reduced the NMD percentage of ownership interests in an NMD corporation. But after public hearings on all three islands, it is estimated that about 95% of all who voiced out concerns were against the amendment. It's true and it's, and it's, and it's accepted that our people have, are not ready to, to uh, amend the, that restriction just yet. And I, and I applaud all of them for coming out. And I also applaud the ones that uh, didn't have the time to, and, and perhaps maybe they're supporting it, or maybe they have other ideas, but it's time to move forward and we'll get on to the next phase. And I ask everybody to let's help each other out. Let's, let's do what's good for the scene. It might help, help each other out how to, uh, to uh, recover and, and be vibrant and be sustainable at the same time. Hoff Schneider formally requested Senator Justo Kutigua to file the initiative. Coming up, KSPN has more trivia questions for you that is part of our Tourism Month promotion. Stay tuned. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. We're in a race whether we know it or not. Build our new normal. Enough for Mali to be out. Let's back to the HDMI. by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Did you know turtle blood and turtle shell can tell us a decades long story about health of the ocean? As part of Tourism Month, we are taking a look back at some of the things that make the Mariana Islands so unique. In this story, we were just offshore in Tinian looking for turtle blood. We didn't want to hurt the turtle, just to ask him or her to tell us a story. Our Chris Nelson has more. Easiest way to catch and tag turtles is to wait for them to come ashore and lay their eggs. A turtle on a sandy beach is an easy target. 
To catch them in their natural environment is a bit harder, and in most places in the world you start that conversation with a net. But in the CNMI with our warm, clear waters and experienced free divers, the process is a little different. He'll grab the turtle and bring it to the surface, and as soon as he does, he'll bring it to the back of the boat. Dr. Jennifer Keller wants blood, turtle blood that is, so she can test it in her laboratory. Well, we expect to find some heavy metals um, and also maybe some organic pollutants. Jesse Hopday has caught over a thousand turtles for research using a deep breath of air, keen eyesight, and local knowledge. We are looking for hawksbills, and Tammy Summers from DLNR says we will go south. So today we're heading out to Tinian to do that research. As we head out, we're briefly escorted by some friendly dolphins. All of us hope it is a lucky sign. Once off Tinian, we gear up and ease into the water. My job is to follow Jesse and keep another pair of eyes out for turtles. Jesse scouts the reef and dives into a series of nooks and crannies. He knows the spots and he also knows how to use the sunlight to disguise himself as he approaches a feeding or sleeping turtle. Jesse soon spots one on the reef and heads down for a grab. It's a small green one and he brings it to the surface. This one won't do. We're looking for hawksbills, so this little green gets an early release and we decide to try our luck elsewhere. We find pay dirt at 100 feet. It's too deep for Jesse to dive on a breath of air, and a diver on scuba can't go that deep and bring a turtle up to the surface without risking decompression sickness. So this will require a coordinated effort, half scuba and half free diving. Sydney Takahashi brings the turtle up on scuba and then makes the handoff to Jesse, who brings it up to the surface. We have our first hawk's bill of the day, and the scientists quickly go to work. The turtle goes onto a pallet, and the pallet is elevated. This helps the blood rush to the head, and Summers then takes her samples from the neck area. The head is covered with a towel. This prevents bites and calms the turtle down from what is a stressful situation. Next, a microchip is inserted into the back flipper. This turtle now has a unique number. A small skin sample is also taken and then a series of measurements of both length and girth. The turtle is also weighed, and the last procedure is to take a sample of the shell, or scoot. What do you learn from the shell that you don't learn from the blood? We can measure heavy metals in both. Um, the, the scoot material, the keratin, it's a protein that makes up the shell. It's just like our fingernails and our hair, and it accumulates heavy metals. It, it deposits heavy metals into that tissue. The blood shows recent exposure while the scoot can show exposure over time. The area must be cleaned before the scoot shavings can be collected and once it's sterile, they are then scraped into a collection bag. The samples will go into liquid nitrogen for a chilled ride back to Keller's stateside laboratory. The hawksbill gets to return home and no doubt is right now telling his buddies, you won't believe what just happened to me. Chris Nelson for the Channel 2 News. Our trivia question for Monday was golf related. Let's take a look at the question and answer. What's the longest golf hole on the island of Saipan? Russell Hokog knew that the answer to that question is hole number 18 at Coral Ocean Golf. From the Blue Tees, this par 5 hole plays at 607 yards. From the White Tees, it's still over 500. The hole's called Nelson Dream, but unless you can hit it big, you might be dreaming to get it there in two. Larry Nelson, the designer of the golf course, put his last name on this hole. Russell wins a gift certificate for his correct answer from the Mariana's Visitors Authority. Time for more trivia. Our Chris Nelson has the question. Do you have the answer? Okay, we are sticking with the golf theme for tonight. Players here know that the CNMI boasts a number of spectacular courses, two of which were designed by PGA Tour professionals. Our golf courses sit on public land, which generally means that a local rate is provided that encourages local play. Top local juniors include Xerxes Camacho and Joshua Atalig, and their dads aren't bad either, J.J. Atalig and Joe Kamikaze Camacho. Local Korean players have put in top performances as well over the last few years. Now here's the question, and this one's a hard one. Who is the most famous golfer to have ever been to Saipan? If you know the answer, email it first to me, chris, at kspn2.com. 
Winner gets a gift certificate from the Mary Honest Visitors Authority. Congratulations, Russell. You're a winner. Of course, we already knew that. All right, coming up, there is a, an official uh, proclamation signing in the KSBN2 Sports Department. Yeah, it's proclaimed to be time for the Palau Playoffs. Entertainment lets you do TV your way with Docomo Pacific D TV Plus. Watch your favorite live and local channels, stream movies and shows on TV, on your phone, and on your tablet, right from your Docomo Pacific Wi Fi. No more wires, no more cable boxes. Now with the best price. Do TV your way with Docomo Pacific D TV Plus. We're in a race whether we know it or not. Build our new normal. In a family, it's the deal. Let's make the life. So, what are you going to do this year? At Gold's, a dedicated fitness studio with a cushioned floor is perfect for group exercise. The cardio room features a variety of treadmills, bikes, steppers, and ellipticals. Fitness machines will help you achieve your goals, and the largest free weight area on Saipan gives you comfortable space to work out. Gold's Gym Team is ready to help you get to your goals. Try harder. We know you can do it. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Marianas Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Marianas Trekking, Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans.
Buenos sports fans, it's no accident. Peleliu, well, those are that's a powerhouse, you know, in the Palau League, and they had a chance to upset pennant-minded Sufa with a big win on a Sunday in the uh, final game of the regular season. Enough of this chit chat. We got to go to the show, so let's go to the video. Final game of the regular season. Team Sufa with a chance to tie Monamigos for the pennant. Ray Borja does his thing. <laughs> A liner to Mark Flores, almost two outs for the price of one. Mabel Naringmas, he's an original Pella Louise, and Pella Lou came to fight, fight for victory. <laughs> and with Ray Villa Gomez in their lineup, how could they lose? Ah. You wonder. He comes from Rip City. He almost rips the cover off the ball. Ben Hoko caught it in a life-saving move. Here's fine leather from the Sufa store. Sonny Sablon starting the 5-4-3 twin killing. It's going to take over. Don't give up. There you man. At this time, the ball goes all right between Sonny's legs, and that opens the door. And Ben Hoko knocked it down. Mumbel rounds third like Ronald Acuna Jr. Pelalu up 12 to 4. Pat DeLeon Guerrero, he tries to ignite a late rally. Sonny follows with a shot over the shortstop. Ray goes up the middle, and you've heard that expression one day at a time. How about one run at a time? Well, unfortunately for Sufa, that's all they could do. They were running out of outs, or as they say in Peleliu, out. Joe Fejerano, one hopper to Walter. He throws a one hopper to Mark, who saves him with a scoop cap. <laughs> Mark Flores. Hey, Ray, what do you think of Mark Flores? Good, man. It's good. Pretty good. Been doing that all Last inning, Paul Salalia dumps a lazy fly into right field that drops in for a run batted in. Next up, Audie Marikita, and he deposits the ball into barbecue land next to the ribs. Peleliu says, hey, let's all join the barbecue because this game is over. Peleliu upsets Team Suva 12-8. Handing the Amigos the pennant with the playoffs starting Sunday at Dan Dan, man. The Roots are digging deeper in youth soccer. Saturday's Grassroots Festival attracted a record-breaking turnout. The Cobleville soccer field filled to the max Saturday. Four fields were needed, plus the one mini pitch to accommodate 22 youth soccer teams comprised of 190 players. Saturday was just a fun day of round-robin play for these kids that are 12 and under. Don't worry about the scores, just play and have fun. up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw. Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at marianastrekking.com hours 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. 
Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at marianastrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now, just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. Today's high 91, the low 81, humidity 66%. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, isolated showers. East winds 10 to 15, high around 90, low 80. No cool nights. Seas are 5 to 7 feet. Sunrise 547 on Thursday. A low tide 849, high tide 1251. Sunset at 640. And that is it. Thank you for watching this Wednesday edition of the KSPN2 News, Sports, and Weather. See you back here on Friday.